Hello, Flat Earth researchers, debaters, and debunkers. I was sent the link to this web page by someone in my comments section on my channel, so I thought it would be worth just demonstrating how unscientific and how easy it is to show how the people that believe they can disprove the flat earth and prove a globe earth with these water level experiments are really just being very childish and unscientific about the whole thing. It's so easy once you see what's actually going on here to to demonstrate how, how wrong they are and how uh, they just don't have anything but uh, lies and obfuscation on their side to try and debunk this idea that uh, the horizon somehow drops below eye level. The fact is that eye level is where you will always find the horizon. Uh, this is a commonly accepted fact of life uh, until you come across someone who wants to defend the globe belief and of course the globe model is very much dependent on having a horizon that's created by some kind of imaginary curvature when in fact uh, the horizon is something that occurs in our eyes as a result of uh, looking across a level surface. So let's just go through this and, and we'll show very clearly why these guys just can't really do any science at all and they have nothing to back up their ridiculous claims that we have this kind of apparent drop in the horizon at eye level. So here we have uh, this uh, introduction here that says, flat earthers like to say water finds its own level. Well, this is just simply a fact of life, and, and this is why you can use the water level as is demonstrated here, because we know that uh, water on either side of these tubes will be at the same level. This is, this is real physics. And this is why we know that when we look at some, we compare these two diagrams here of a flat earth model, uh, which is more like reality, and this uh, ridiculous round earth globe model. We can see that, uh, of course, the natural physics of water would have water flow down this curve and on a level plane, it would be much more easily contained between these two points. I mean, straight off, this is just physics. This is just real life physics. But uh, that aside, what we're talking about here is, is how these measurements are uh, performed by using this kind of spirit or water level uh, to find what they call true level. And we can see that what we're talking about here is eye level. So we have the, uh, the horizontal eye level line of sight uh, at this particular height lined up with these uh, water levels here and seeing if it will line up with the distant horizon. That's basically the premise of the experiments here. And uh, here is what they predict is what you should see on a flat earth. Basically this is eye level passing through the two levels here and you would also see it uh, hitting uh, a mountain in the distance and of course with the globe earth you would have this eye level horizon that uh, shows uh, this massive drop of more distant uh, objects. Well, of course, to go with this, you have some mathematics. And uh, as usual, uh, it must be pointed out that when you have a diagram like this and you seek to uh, have your mathematical proofs, uh, then you will al always get your mathematical proofs if you have a, a line of a certain uh, length or these certain angles and uh, tangent lines and what have you, you will be able to prove the math in of itself. It will always work in this diagram. It will be undeniable. But when you actually come to using this in reality, it doesn't fit with reality. So here's what they've done. Uh, we've got some photographs here showing uh, this water level here, which does, in this instance, uh, line up with the more distant horizon and we have all this math to go with it and here they say this experiment actually works out at sea level sea level is just a hair below true level but w 
you know, what do you actually consider you are looking at? Do you think you are looking into this bulge of curvature that's coming up to this same physical height as the water in front of you? Well, obviously not, according to this illustration here, where you have a surface which at least is is correct in this assumption that you would have a surface that's always curving down and away from you. So, you know, you have to consider what what is it that makes this horizon appear to be as high physically as the water in front of you? Because we know that physically it's not it's not doing that. This is the effect we have when we look across a flat surface. But we'll see in a minute that this actually this whole setup isn't at true eye level. Uh, and we have uh, the sim a similar thing here. So what we have here is this claim that in this experiment it works out in the mountains at an altitude of almost two miles above sea level the horizon is over a degree below true level. So we have uh, these mountains and the elevation and then we have this peak in the distance and we have this line here representing true level. Uh, well, okay, you can see that this is lined up with these um, water levels here, but is that really the same as the eye level, as was illustrated uh, in the diagram up here? You know, have is is this apparatus lined up with eye level to represent true level, or is there con some confusion there? Over, or obfuscation over what eye level and true level actually are. Well, we'll see again how, how that has been uh, misrepresented in this photograph. And some more explanations here, uh, an, an illustration of the setup. And again, we have um, this, this line here that's been put across this photograph to represent level. So we have or what they might refer to as true level. But is this eye level? Uh, again, we'll, we'll have a look and, and see whether or not that is actually eye level. So we have these two uh, water levels lined up here in the foreground, and we seem to have this apparent drop of the horizon. And to this person here would therefore appear to confirm that we live on a globe because they've done all sorts of scientific measurements here. All right, and we've even got this calculator. And uh, he mentions that this was the photograph that inspired him to do this and uh, again we have this reiteration of the idea that um, uh, this is what you should see with a flat earth model the eye level lining up with the tubes here and also with the horizon in the distance and uh, this is the claim that we don't see this but we see this we see this big drop from eye level to the distant horizon Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just have a look at those photographs. Uh, all right, uh, I've put them into GIMP here. But first, let's just reiterate what eye level actually is. And this is a, according to any kind of uh, dic dictionary definition. Eye level is a horizontal line of sight. So yes, you can talk about the height of the observer being that person's eye level, but what is most important is that person is looking straight ahead, a horizontal line of sight. That is eye level. Now, of course, if you have something that's uh, physically at eye level in front of you, such as a, a photograph, a, a picture on the wall, or a, an eye level grill, or something like that, then physically that uh, object is at the same height as your eyes, and you're looking straight ahead at it. But when it comes to the horizon, uh, this is obviously something that's uh, off into the distance, and this is just a natural observable visual phenomenon that happens when we look across a level surface. We have this surface appearing to rise up to eye level and it is at this point of convergence is where we get our horizon. Again, this is, this is not something that's ever contested by anyone. This is a widely accepted fact of life that when we look straight ahead, we will see a horizon at eye level. There is no argument about how high off the ground we are. You look straight ahead and you will have a horizon at 
eye level. And just to be very, very clear here, um, if, we, if we kind of looked up slightly or looked down slightly, we could, we could be tilting our head or even our eyes. Uh, again, we've got to remember that the eyes can move about in, 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 in their sockets. And of course, even a slight movement from uh, true level, eye level, will obviously result in this widening gap because obviously it, it, you know, it gets longer and farther apart over distance. And the same goes for looking down as well. Okay, but of course we also have perspective which comes into play, which works in the opposite way to the widening field of view where we have perspective creating a shrinkage in angular size of everything in the distance. All right, but that's basically uh, it. These, anything that's uh, up or down uh, from eye level is not eye level, okay? Eye level is only this horizontal line of sight, all right? It, it, it really sh shouldn't have to be explained. This is just a fact of life. So, uh, let's go back to uh, the first photograph and we can see here that one really, really easy way to do this for, you know, if anyone wants to look at these websites and believe the claims that they are making, then you just go ahead and you believe it. Uh, but the whole point here is to test these things for yourself. So what you can do is just take any of these photographs and uh, we can see here, for example, that this one is 600 pixels high um, from top to bottom. So all we have to do to uh, establish eye level, assuming that the camera was uh, horizontal and uh, you know this was obviously being scientifically done, uh, then we, we should have um, everything lining up midway. Uh, what I've done here is I've just brought this uh, marker down. We can see that it comes down to exactly the uh, 300 mark there. So that's exactly halfway. This should be eye level of this photograph. It should have been taken uh, horizontally if this experiment was going to be in any way truly scientific and represent eye level or true level, if you like. But what do we, what do we have here? We have this eye level which is you know, way above both of these. So, okay, this person has managed to photograph the uh, water level and put it in line with the horizon, which is easy enough to do if you just play around with the camera and the parallax, um, then you'll eventually get this result. But what you should also do is make sure that everything is lined up here at eye level. And when it is lined up, then you know that actually this will tell you that the camera is in fact level. So you can see here that this, this hasn't been done properly, all right? And uh, the same goes for the next picture here. This again is a height of 600 uh, pixels. And we can see here that they, they drew this line here to represent what they called true level. Uh, but if we bring this marker down again to the halfway mark to 300, we can see that the camera's eye level is here, okay? Uh, this is the center of the camera's field of view and it's way below these two levels here. So none of this is lined up in properly. This hasn't been scientifically done. And so this line, this white line that they put in here means nothing. It means absolutely nothing because the camera's eye level is here. And again, it's worth pointing out that if you're going to talk about eye level, then if you have a photograph, then it is the center of that uh, camera's field of view, as long as that camera is looking straight ahead, horizontally, horizontal line of sight. You can't then draw lines elsewhere and make claims about where eye level should be, because eye level is always subjective. It's not objective. It's always subjective. Your eye level is different depending on where you're standing to someone else next to you but everyone has a horizon that's at their own eye level. Wherever they are looking, however high or low they are off the ground or above sea level, each individual observer has their own eye level and they have their own horizon at their own eye level. So you, you, just, you simply cannot dictate where eye level is for anyone else other than for the observer. So again, this is wrong. 
and uh, we'll look at this one. Again, here we have uh, this line that they've drawn to represent what they called true level. Uh, this particular image is uh, 651 pixels. So let's just, uh, for the, um, the uh, people who have difficulty with numbers, oops, let's just, uh, oops, sorry, let's go back. So 651. All we've got to do here is go 651 divided by 2, and that gives us 325.5. So uh, we just bring this up. We'll go to 300 and, oops, 330, oh, that's 325. Okay, so what do we have here? We have this, this level here, eye level of the camera, which is, is above these levels here. And, and again, it's just, it's just an unscientific observation. Hasn't been done with any degree of accuracy. It's not representing eye level or true level in any way. It's wrong. And even we go to the photograph that was said to inspire this whole thing. Uh, I've already put the marker here. You can go and test it for yourself. This was 440 pixels high, so 220. We have the camera's eye level if it's looking straight ahead. And we can see it's not in line with these two water levels here. It's not in line with anything. So again, this is an invalid uh, experiment. It, it doesn't represent true eye level in any way. All right? Um, but what is, is cool to look at is, uh, is this one, for example. Here we have a, a frame from uh, a video that's uh, taken inside an aircraft. And this is the Airbus en route, HUD cockpit view. You can go and check this out yourself. And again, we've done the same thing. We've got this uh, uh, height of the frame here as being 1,080. So we have this uh, line right here in the center of the field of view. And we can see that we have the horizon in the center of the field of view. OK? Uh, that's really how it is. That's just how it is. You, the, horizon tells you where eye level is. There is no drop. Now, what some people have done in order to make the straw man argument that the horizon drops below eye level is to refer to this horizon line or horizontal line in the heads-up display as eye level. And that's, again, just as we pointed out just now, uh, if you're going to talk about eye level, uh, if you're talking about someone else's eye level or something else's eye level other than what is in the photograph that you've taken, then you're, you're just creating uh, a misconception. It's a, it's a lie. Because we can see here that this horizon line is not at the camera's eye level. The camera's eye level is here in the center of the field of view. Yeah, so this, this this line on the heads-up display is not at eye level. Yes, you can say that it represents level, and you have to have this uh, appropriate gap between the bore sight of the aircraft on the heads-up display and the horizontal line to represent the pitch, which you can see uh, you've got the, the five-degree pitch, positive pitch mark here, so we can see that the, the nose here is pitched up about uh, two degrees or so. Yeah? And what we can do here is uh, we can have a line. It's quite interesting to see this here. That what we, have, we have a line, if we draw this line here between the HUD horizon line and the actual horizon outside, we have this length. And then we bring it up to here, and we've got the, we've pretty much the same length. So we've got this. Uh, the same distance between the bore site and the HUD horizon line as we do uh, down here. And so, you know, this is uh, conformal or conformant with uh, the outside surroundings or the, the relative uh, pitch of the aircraft compared to uh, its level, its true level. But of course, this is just a display for uh, reference. It's not supposed to be uh, instead of what we would see. It 
actually doesn't have this this display could be anywhere on the aircraft in fact what we see in the heads-up display is just a representation of the instrument panel uh, down below the pilot's uh, normal view usually the pilot would have to look down to look at the artificial horizon so of course when the pilot looks down to the artificial horizon that artificial horizon display is not at the pilot's eye level is it it's just a display just to show just to represent the information to the pilot but it just so happens that this information is being represented to the pilot here we can see that the aircraft is pitched up from its level at about two degrees uh, and uh, so and we can also see that this HUD horizon line is not at the camera's eye level. Yeah. So this this just hopefully will clear up the misconceptions that have created there and, and just really help to illustrate how people can make this very, very simple issue confusing, um, simply because they would love to say that the uh, the horizon drops below eye level uh, because that's what it has to do with the globe model belief but the reality of it is is that the horizon is always at your eye level and this is how we instinctively know that the earth is not a spinning ball thank you very much